Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I decided I would show you guys how to make fry bake. So what you're going to need to make your bake is some all-purpose flour. I also have some sugar and you can either use granulated sugar or brown sugar or organic sugar like I'm using here. I also have some butter and some baking powder. And I also have some milk. Now this is not traditional but I find that the milk makes the end product a lot softer. So that's why I like to add that in. And then I have some water to combine my dough also. The first step in making the bake is to go ahead and incorporate all of that butter into the dry flour. So all you want to do is go in with your fingers and go ahead and crumble in all of that butter, almost if, if you were working it into a pastry dough. So I'm going to go ahead and finish working this into the flour and then I'm going to come back and show you guys what it looks like. This is what the mixture should look like once you've worked in all of that butter. It's going to look nice and crumbly and that's exactly what you want. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and add in all of that baking powder. And remember, the baking powder gives the bake that nice fluffiness that it's known for. At this point, I also went ahead and I added in all of my sugar. So I'm going to mix that in and we're going to move on to the next. Once you've mixed in all of your baking powder and your sugar, it's time to go ahead and add in all of that milk. Now, I use a combination of milk and water to mix my bake just because I find that the addition of milk makes the bakes a little softer in the end. But of course, if you wanted to, you could just go ahead and use water or you could use all milk or you could mix it like I'm doing here. I also wanted to let you guys know that when you're adding in any liquids to your bake mixture, you want to make sure to that these liquids are warm or lukewarm because I find that when you add cold liquids into your bake, the end product tends to be a little tough. Once you've added in all of your milk, it's time to go ahead and mix in your water little by little. What you're looking for when you mix baked dough is for a soft dough, but you want to make sure that it's not too sticky, nor is it too hard. So I'm going to go ahead and continue mixing in my water little by little, and then I'm going to show you guys what it looks like when I'm done mixing. I finished mixing in all of my water and this is what my dough looks like. It's nice and soft, but it's not too sticky, nor is it too hard. So what you're going to want to do at this point is knead the dough for about a minute just until it becomes a little smooth on the top. Once you finish kneading the dough, you're going to go ahead and cover it with a damp paper towel and you're going to let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes before you start making your bakes. The reason for this is so you want the glutens to relax in your dough so this way your end product is not tough at all. Once your dough has had a chance to rest, it's time to go ahead and portion it out into equal sized balls. So if you wanted to roll your bake in circular shapes, what you're going to have to do is roll them into individual balls and then roll them in your hands as I'm doing here. You want to make sure to get a smooth edge on them and do it just like I'm doing here or else they're not going to swell in the oil. So another way you can go ahead and fry your bakes is by rolling out a large portion of the dough and then just cutting them into different shapes. That's a quicker way, but if you like the circular shape of the bake, then you'd want to go ahead and do each ball individually like this. So I'm going to show you both ways. I finished portioning out all of my dough and as you guys can see I have the individual balls here to go ahead and make the circular shaped bake and then I saved a large portion of the dough to go ahead and roll out and cut the bake into different shapes. Now that's the easier way of doing it so you can pick and choose which way suits you the best. So I'm going to go ahead and start rolling one of the circular ones. You just want to dip one of the balls of dough into your dry flour. And I don't like to use a lot of dry flour because if you do, when you're frying the bake, what's going to happen is that excess flour is going to float to the bottom of the oil and it's going to start to burn. So you want to make sure not use too much flour when rolling them. And while you're rolling them, the thickness is totally up to you. They should not be transparent or else they're not going to swell at all. But you can go ahead and roll them to about a quarter to half an inch thick depending on how thick you like your bakes. So I find that this is good for me. I like my bakes on the thinner side and just like when you're frying puri, you want to make sure you roll out a few of these bakes before you start frying. Before I move on to the frying process, I just wanted to show you guys how I would roll and cut out the large portion of dough. So I've just rolled out the dough to my desired thickness and then I'm going through with my knife and I'm going to get about nine pieces from this one piece of dough. It all depends on how big or small you want the pieces and also how thin you rolled it. And these will fry up exactly the same as the circular shaped ones. It just depends on how you want to make it and if you want to go through the effort of making the circular ones. So let's move on to the frying process now. I've had my oil heating up on a medium high heat now for a few minutes 
and I have a bowl here that I've lined with some paper towels just so that it could drain off some of the excess oil on my bakes when they're done frying. Now what you want to do once that oil comes up to temperature, you're going to drop in one of your bakes and then with a rocking motion, you're going to go ahead and push down the bake with your spoon or your spatula or whatever you're using. And then you're going to go ahead and flip it over immediately and let the next side brown for about 30 seconds. Once it browns, you're going to go ahead and remove it from the oil. Now, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and fry more than one bake at a time in this pot. But if you are inexperienced in making bake or even inexperienced in frying, you want to go ahead and try to just do one at a time. So this way you don't end up burning the bakes. I finished frying all of my bakes and as you guys can see the exteriors are nice and golden brown. I'm just going to go ahead and break one open to show you guys what they look like inside. And they're really nice and fluffy and they're hollow inside. So I'm going to serve these today with some fried saltfish. So be on the lookout for that video because it will be posted very soon. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. That's the only way that you'll be notified on when I post new videos. And go ahead and comment down below on what you guys would like to see next. Once again, thanks for watching guys.